Welcome to the series of Montgomery Amateur Radio Club videos. In this video, David W2LNX will discuss broadband over amateur radio. So briefly what that is, using a 2 meter radio and a TNC at slow speed, 1200 bits per second from 30 years ago, packet technology from 30 years ago, we can connect to a distant VHF station called the Gateway, which is then connected to the internet so you can send an email. So it doesn't go directly into the internet, it goes to the server, the message server someplace in the world, and then they join up with the SMTP, the, the actual email uh, internet system. That's very, very cool. So I said, oh, why don't we make that even better? So we have emergency power, right? Right, the custodian plugs us in, right? So that's cool and we have the internet, but let's say there's a blackout. And as a rule of thumb, what is it, a radius of 50 miles, a distressed area? Well, it, it depends on the event, of course, but the, the, uh, the most, common, most common emergency in the middle Atlantic, by actual count, is ice storms. Oh. And they vary. They can cover from Tennessee clean up to Maine, or they can just wipe out one and a half of one county in Maryland. It depends what the weather does. Yeah. Anyway, so let's say the internet goes down. So, to, um, um, so using, the, using a high-speed network, we can connect to, the, uh, uh, to an access point actually in, 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 in Pennsylvania. And uh, Keith Elkin, uh, KB3TCB is in here, because he's been very actively involved building the Part 15 network. So, um, the idea is to have two internet connections to our high availability, reliable, robust packet gateway. You know, I had trouble connecting to the Laurel packet gateway that's too far, too noisy. I had trouble connecting to a Gambrel Mountain that's too far, that is origin away. But when at last year to get 100 points to send a, an email at field day to the section manager using packet gateway uh, from a high point in the county, from Damascus up to Gamble Mountain. Wow, I had an epiphany. It's like, wow, this stuff is really good. The big idea is slow is infinitely faster than nothing at all, relatively speaking, that is. That sounds smart. Um, anyway, so that's the, so in a nutshell, that's the plan. We want to create a high availability, dual redundant, uh, packet gateway so we can send email. My initial experience before I actually tried it was HF. So my connection is up in the Catskills. It always seems to work. I guess it's ground wave on 40 meters. Uh, probably slower than packet 1,200 bits per second. But hey, the email works. Computers are tirelessly will connect. So uh, that's what we're planning to do up there. And so um, let me go to the next page. So I have four blow-ups of each of the circles. The way I design things is I scribble on paper, and then once I'm satisfied with it, then I transcribe it, uh, you know, copy it over neatly. Luckily, I, in, in high school, I had to take drafting for two years. So I learned how to draw lines, circles, and arrows, and print. <laughs> David. David. Yeah. Before you uh, take that slide away, would you just hop through it real fast? and tell me where is the uh, uh, imaginary ham user? Okay. At the bottom, at the bottom. Yeah, okay. The imaginary ham user is where? Right, so the imaginary ham user is some location. Okay, some location. Some location. Some location. Hot spot, where is that? Um, some mark location. Okay, some mark not site. specific. Uh, the Winling Packet Gateway, where is that located? Well, at the north side. At the north okay, side. Okay, thank you. I was getting ahead of myself. In Germantown. Does and, everybody and see where's, that? And where's the network? Relay. Okay, so the network relay would be decked. Can I disclose the actual location? Where's Ron? Yeah. That's right. The actual location? Yeah. It's right near 27 and then. Okay, so it's not a secret. So okay, it's the yeah. firehouse. Yeah. Yeah, the roof. <coughs> so, um, so this bubble here is the, uh, the decked firehouse. They're about uh, six miles or eight miles. I did the simulation on uh, the Ubiquity website. It checks out. The rule about simulations, it tells you if something doesn't work. If it doesn't work, 
you can trust that it does work. If it, if it says it works, then it's a definite maybe. It's worth investigating. So that's the good thing about simulation software. Uh, and notice that the north side is in the center, because it's kind of like the hub, and from that will build out. And I use clouds as internet, it's a typical symbol. Straight lines as an ethernet cable or cable. And a lightning bolt as radio waves. And so notice here, we have the part 15 network over here at 5.8 gigahertz, because that's folks are, are building that. And that's like very interesting. I like to support that because, again, this is in support of what Mark wants to do. So what does that mean? So the deck uh, is actually online between uh, Damascus and Braddock Heights. What is that, 22 miles? So there's a temporary dish up there, but it's connected. And Dick WN3R from his mountain, the same location with his packet gateway, connected up, uh, they had someone climb the tower and put up a ubiquity 5.8 gigahertz dish, a rocket dish. Actually, at that time, I'll show you pictures of that. All the way to Red Line, Pennsylvania, 55 miles an hour. I mean, 55 miles. What was that before? It's all one L. It's the double nickel, 55 miles. Anybody remember the national 55 miles an hour? Never mind. 55 miles, which is about 80, 90 kilometers. Very impressive. The, the specifications for the ubiquity, Airman's family of equipment is conservatively rated. It's amazing. These radios are half watt radios. Did you throw off half watt? No, ah, no, no, no. Half watt plus the DBI of dishes, and it adds up to something like 50 DBI. And when I first did the math, I said, is that right? I mean, is that 100 watts? Ooh, I don't want to be in the front of that thing, you know? Say, so David, can you also go into, because I see part 15. Are they going to be using our amateur radio frequencies? Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, the, great. The, 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 the blow ups. Okay, so is everybody clear with the, as Terry likes to say, the, the 10,000 foot picture of the network? Is that what you say, 10,000 foot or 100,000 foot? When you talk doesn't about matter. how. What's that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let me go on to the next one. So what is, this is the most complicated picture. If you understand this, then you understand the system. So to answer Alex's question, we have a little blue box. It's made by Linksys. This is enterprise class, not, you don't, actually I discovered this in microcenters. Wow, I'm impressed. So they always keep like two in stock and then they stop discontinuing because they want, nobody was buying those. I don't blame them. So I found this, um, and what it is, it's two WANs, WAN1 and WAN2. So I brought in, the, it was some years ago, I bought, the, I like, I love refurbished stuff because it's got like 15 day or 30 day warranty. This is a $10 router. This is your family um, home Wi-Fi router. It's got, I like to, uh oh. It's supposed to be a safe hobby. Okay. Um, $10, I'm not crying over it. So red is internet, the bad line. It was every other packet is trying to, you know, is malware. Anyway, so how does this, so in your house, you have one of these things. So people are trying to always connect. It's fun to look at the logs, you know, people turning the knobs. So this is a firewall that you can connect out, but nobody can connect in. So of course I have to fool people and talk to them about phishing and email, that's a different story. But this firewall does not allow people to connect to the <coughs> network, cannot connect to your computers and just cause uh, overall mischief. And uh, I think the new, the new ones these days now come with a password, as opposed to the password being the password, or the, or the app, you know, they, they think they fixed that finally. Um, and so, we're all familiar with this. Now, what if you have a device in your house, such as my uh, Blu-ray player does not have Wi-Fi, even though it's 10 years old. So you buy a device, okay, nomenclature. This is known as an access point. You know, a Wi-Fi access point, there's nothing new here. Everybody, anybody not know what an access point is? That's okay, don't be more knowledge. Okay, so everybody knows what that is. And see, it's got the internet connection. Okay, so my, my uh, Blu-ray player does not have an internet connection. And I got tired of 
you know, unrolling this 20 foot, 30 foot Ethernet cable. So this is this is silly. So I went to Micro Center and I bought what a Wi-Fi client. Now they don't use the words like client. That's that, that's you know, network engineers, network folks say client. So they call this a Wi-Fi Ethernet converter. Okay, that, that describes what it is. That's the name of the product. It's a little bit more expensive, a lot more expensive than an access point. This is eighty dollars versus twenty dollars or ten dollars. Well, it's just a, it's a numbers game, but also whatever the market will bear. Anyway, notice the red cable, and it goes into my little blue box here, connected to WAN 1. But WAN 2 is connected to my ubiquity um, nano beam over here. And see, see the dish here? There's a big dish right behind it. Now, I don't, also, I don't want to put this in the dish. I'm running this at a very low power. Uh, it's about 400 microwatts. So, uh, you know, this, this is microwave. You're going to have a little bit of respect. It's like lightning, except in very different frequency. Um, so, to answer your question, people cannot connect to our network. We can connect out. So, I have two demonstrations. One of them being uh, the star. And. Uh, and then we get back to here. Yeah, so here, here it is. So with Bruce's help, thank you, Bruce, W83SWJ. Uh, he helped, he actually put this together. Um, this is a Winlink packet gateway and TNC on a Raspberry Pi. And actually it's right here. And I, I, hesit, I learned, don't touch working equipment because wires have a way of getting jiggled and it just breaks. So anyway, there it is. This is a little computer, a $35 computer. And how much, how much is the TNC Pi? I think $60 if you assemble it, or, or $80 if he assembles it. This is John Han uh, Hansen. Uh, and there it is. And it's connected to a HT, an FMHT. OK, so this is all. This is, this is very busy. You know, the equipment rack at the north site. You can see how busy it is here. So that's what that, that is over here. And also, notice it's on the LAN side, on the Part 97 side. Uh, so also all connected to the LAN is a 3.4 gigahertz on the Part 97 LAN side. We're running a ham radio network. We're running two applications, VSTAR and Winland. Very cool. So what we're doing, we're aiding and abetting, improving what we're already we're currently doing. I think they're very interesting applications myself. And besides, you know, if you're going to have data, make at least interesting data. <laughs> OK. Now, so let's look at the, so is everybody clear with Mark North what that is? And the key is this dual WAN router. Oh, this can be configured to go through both ports, WAN 1 and WAN 2, load balancing. And, or you can do failover. This is a matter of policy. We can make WAN 1 being the local, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mark North internet connection, which is uh, Ethernet in the wall. You plug it in the wall and it works. I think that's what it is. You just plug it in the wall, right? Terry? The internet connection to NOSA, you plug it in the wall. Yes. Exactly. So that would be WAN 1. And then if that for some reason fails, it would roll over to WAN 2 uh, up to, uh, along the network. And here's the best part. We can be mutually, we can mutually back each other up. Now, this is where Bruce would have to come in, you know, to figure out how do you do the networking so that they can come to, you know, let's say in Pennsylvania they lose the internet. How can they use our internet connection or any internet, ac uh, uh, internet uh, access point along the backbone? Because presumably the, these uh, relay stations, you know, have, you know, is also connected to the, to the, uh, the backbone. What he has in Braddock Heights. He's co-located with a small radio station. My goodness, having friends in high places. So he has his own power and on his own internet connection, but it's in a nice, warm, cozy, heated building. And so that's an access point. So at that point can back up Pennsylvania, can back us up. Very interesting. OK, so at the other end, see, you see the, the pictures match up. So here we have the part 15, two mark north, just like over here, two deck, so two mark north, and 
presumably, they're not going to plug right into the internet. You know, it's kind of dumb. So you use a, so you, what I call a, a data diode. That's what it is. So you take, so in this case, all you need is just a, a $10 device, because all you need is one connection. Uh, and let's drop again. Uh, one way, but not the other way. Uh, so that's, so they're connected, so that's a simple setup there. Now, what I'm not showing here is actually the network continues on and on and on, all the way to, to, to Pennsylvania. So, Gary Blacksmith, the Central Pennsylvania IP network, built on his own nickel and with the support of friends, uh, rather extensive, I think it's like over 100 miles of links, oh, rather elaborate uh, system. I'm going to give you all the vision, all, all the presentations, and you know, do what you want with them. I'm going to PDFs, and if you want, I can just give you the paper copies. It's right there. Uh, and so they, so he's agreed that we can, that we, once we figure out how to, you know, uh, how to do the full connectivity from down here, that we can get on the network. And about 80 or 90 miles away, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, is where his internet connection. Oh, okay. Um. I'd like to get back to uh, the part 15. How do you visualize that working with part 97? Because I see, I don't see a one-way arrow any place. I see connections that look like they're two-way. Well, so how are we going to okay, do this? You see this firewall. Yeah, but what, what, what do you visualize as the relationship okay. between part 15? How do they work together? Let's say somebody wants to connect to a ham, to a station on our network, the way this is configured right now, they cannot come in. The way a firewall works, you cannot connect from the, from the WAN side, the wide area network side, to a computer on the LAN side. It's the other way around. You can connect from the LAN side, a computer on the LAN side, to connect to a remote web server. So it's going to be one-way communications from us to it's, the part it, 15? It, is that what you're saying? Initially. Initially. Now. There are, some, there, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are rules that you can set. For example, you can open up, they call it a hole in the firewall. For example, uh, Echolink needs to have a hole in the firewall. So what that means, you can allow a connection in to go to an Echolink, and they have to be there's some kind of authentication. So that, we're running out of time, but, but the, the, that introduces the whole problem of authenticating hands to let them into our network. But right now, we can get, in the, at, at most minimal level, we can do something useful and productive, namely to support DSTAR and WinLink, which means that we can get out. Remember, when you connect to, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, uh, what's your favorite website? Ah, markclub.org. You initiate a connection from your browser to the web server, and then it sends a response. But the server, the web server, doesn't connect to your client initiated one way. Now, of course, there is two-way communication once you initiated it. So to establish a connection means to establish, to initiate the communications. So, this, so it's, you know, these, uh, uh, these gates, you can, like, you can go out the gate, but you can't come in the gate. Oh, they have that all the time at uh, you know, airports. You can go out the gate, but you can't come in. Turnstiles, or as an attendant there, you can go out the door, but you can't come in the door. So this is like the first phase of Very a simple. of of a future ongoing oh, project, right? I see this as a five-year project. We have several network engineers, Scott's.